This is Michael Zemlin with the Road Diaries. We are here with the, the one of the old men of the new team Radio Shack. That would be Mr. Chris Horner. Chris, how you doing today? Good. All right. Um, you are one of the uh, the crispier and crunchier riders on the team. Um, second oldest rider on the team. Who's the oldest rider on the new Radio Shack team? Lance is the oldest. Lance. Guy on the team. Just and how many months? How many months older is he than you? One or two. One or two months. Okay, so you're pretty close. One. One month. Okay, so tell us. Uh, you're coming into the Radio Shack camp. This is the first camp with the team and a lot of a lot of the old players but still a new team what are the, what is the feeling on the on the campus here I don't know I forgot already <laughs> I'm getting old dude you're getting old once again your <laughs> name is Chris Horner yes exactly who are we with we're with uh, this is the road diaries in SRAM oh, and you're right. you're that's with right. team radio shack that's right fantastic team radio shack. I forgot I thought this was like the web coordinator so. <laughs> all right so what are your expectations this year this camp and then this year, going into that. Expectations. Well, I, I expect great things from this group of guys. I think we got a fantastic team. Certainly, we we grabbed the cream of the crop coming over from the Stana boys, and then we've grabbed all the cream of the crop for the young kids coming up from the U.S. So we we got we got a really good setup. Now, talk about young kids. I've interviewed uh, about half the team, um, half of the young guys. You know the the, the you know the Bjorn Cylinders and those kind yeah, of guys. Yeah. Every one of them, Chris, mentions you as having uh, uh, a great read on every race, tremendous experience, and they really, a lot of them look to you with a lot, you know, tremendous amount of respect. Tell us about your, and one of them actually said you have more knowledge than most director sportifs in the, in the Pro Tour. Tell us about, you know, how do you, uh, how do you come to understand races? Is it just something that comes natural to you? Because, I mean, you know, we've had conversations where you've talked about races five years ago, how you've won and lost them. Well, just them. picking them apart. I yeah. just like to pick the races apart. I mean, even if, even if the team wins the race, there's mistakes made. So I like to go back and just, and just even find the mistakes that we've made. Find the good, not only the good stuff that you did. Because just because if you won the race doesn't mean there wasn't, you know, 100 mistakes done throughout that day that you could have done different and, and, just rearrange things, but just to pick out the mistakes so we can we can fix those mistakes for later races. Because sometimes you you can sometimes you can still win with multiple mistakes, but other races maybe the competition is a little bit higher and you can't afford to make any mistakes. So I like to just think through the races when the races are said and done. I like to talk about the races with my teammates and stuff, and just pick through and find some things that we can do different. And a lot of times more is picked through on the races that we win versus the races that we lost. Now, are you replaying the courses sometimes in your mind and how the race played out, Absolutely. some of the riders in the past, I mean, the way the race past, the way the history of the races ran in years past, what riders have have done in years past because and directors even how they how they how they picked the race or how they how they how they've raced the race Multiple how they, teams I've raced for so I've seen what I know what scenarios of what different directors will do whether or not if they'll start working before before it would be necessary or just start working you know just just to just for the sake of being on the front some directors but but the money the main part is is, is just dissecting it because I love I love the sport and I love to be involved in it and and I don't just because it finished just because the race finished doesn't mean the race is over you can always look back and, and so find more things are but, you are you but, but one of the main things is when you look back at history is you, you look at Lance who won the Tour de France seven times okay you know when he arrives at the Tour de France he's there to win again there's no doubt about it so he's on his best form but that happens at every race when when Bonin shows up at Tour Flanders and Perry Roubaix, you're getting his best form. There's no doubt about it. So so history has shown that if that guy's won two times in the past, he's coming there with his best form this week too. There's no doubt about it. And but that happens on a smaller scale with the smaller races too. Is a lot of guys will not pick Perry Roubaix because the competition's too stiff there, and they'll pick smaller races to be on their best form. So if you got a rider that's won, say Criterium International back to back like a Yin's Void has, then you know that that's a rider you got to pay attention to. So okay, Tom Boone is going to win Perry Roubaix, but you don't have to pay attention to him when you get at Criterium International. You need to be watch, watching the ends. Right. So tell us, how do you then what? How do you how do you use that information? Are you sharing it with the riders on the team? Are you sharing it with your team director? When is that play? Or is it just playing in your mind? You're sharing it with people. Every as every team I'm riding on, it varies with the team director. Certain directors I've I've talked extensively with. I remember with Saturn and Andre Beck, him and I would talk every night before races to to work out strategy plans and how we were gonna communicate and what kind of tactics we thought were best to run and, and we went, you know, 
hours at night talking bike racing before and after. Uh, then with other directors that don't call me, don't talk to me at all, and we just talk about how you're feeling and how you're not feeling and, and stuff. But certainly you look at the directors like Ekimov. I've talked with Ekimov a lot. Sean Yates last year, him and I talked boatloads of time in the car in the in the bus before and after the race so so different directors and of course it helps if we're, if the director's fluent in English or something uh, certainly with a lot of we had directors that you know Italian director that that's that's not fluent in English then it becomes harder to communicate fluently with and of course I've never had the gift I've had a gift in, in bike racing and being able to read race, but I never had the gift of speaking multiple languages. It's not something that, that has ever uh, taken hold on me. So when I'm with directors that aren't fluent in English, then you know you talk less. Yeah, yeah. So tell us of, um, you know, you you've had great success in your career. You're coming here as one of the more experienced riders. You're going to be uh, uh, definitely on. You know, you want to be on the tour team. I know that. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Tell us uh, how you're feeling personally. I mean, I know you had you know you had some injuries last year. You're coming yeah, in with a sore bunch, back. I know a bunch of injuries last year. Sore back at the end of the year from some nerve, uh, not nerve damage, but some from some bone fragments uh, touching the nerve and making um, some problems. There. And that, but that's an old it. injury that kind of resurfaced. No, or? I don't think it's an old injury. It might be uh, an old age injury. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's an old injury. Uh, certainly not one I've ever had before. So maybe. Many people have asked me the question, where did it come from? Who knows? I crashed hard four times last year. It's certainly an impact injury. Uh, but, of course, it could be just something where age and time has played a part, too. You've done a pretty good job of rehabbing yourself. I mean, I yes, mean you're, on the bike, rehab. you're on the bike quickly, yes. but nonetheless, you pay yes. attention to what the doctors tell you. Absolutely. I pay attention to what the doctors tell me. And I don't just solve a problem. I don't go to the doctor, get a shot, problem solved, and then go back to my right. old ways. You work through. You, know, you work through it. You, you try to solve what originally caused the problem just because the shot takes care of the problem you don't go back and, and go back to your old ways you have to really change the way uh, the way you've been doing things in life awesome hey chris i don't have any more questions for you we're running uh, we're running about seven minutes here on this interview i appreciate your time man every every couple every couple times every season i appreciate you coming to us and, and giving us some time and, and good luck this year with team radio shack we'll be looking for you down the road okay thanks man thanks man